What's happening, fellas? I wanted to show you this technique that Joe McBride, smoking joking, told me about on the phone the other day that I just did. Um, we were talking about what I had left on the yellow 116 Skywing Extra. And I said, not a lot, um, but I think I might cut the cowl, even though I have all this venting already through the bottom of the fuse for the canisters. I go, man, maybe up front to cool the headers. And uh, he goes, what are you going to do? And I go, well, they have that negative air pressure dam on their scale, probably. I didn't even look. And I go, I'll probably just chop it out. He goes, chop it out. He goes, that, that's just subpar, man. That don't look like Team Joe, man. That's average Joe. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, cut slots. I go, eh. I already hate fiberglass work. I go, man, I could just take him wheel and just whack the whole bottom out real quick. And he goes... No, man, just use one of those templates that already are for the bottom of the fuselage on all these Skywing planes. And he goes, just mark it on there. And uh, he says, do you got a step drill bit? And I go, yeah, I do. And he goes, got a drummer with a cutoff wheel? I go, yeah. And he goes, well, just run that step drill bit on each side of each slot. And then uh, run the cutoff wheel on the Dremel between them. And you'll be done in no time. I said, all right. So I still, I still put on my my particulate suit and my gloves and my goggles and my mask and all that stuff but I would say I spent a minute and a half I mean two at the outside and yeah I took the step drill bit and just as fast as I could I drilled those 16 holes and then I took the cutoff wheel and zapped between them and yeah uh, that was four or five minutes ago um, that I started doing that. So I just whacked them in real quick. Now you could take a blue felt pen, touch up the fiberglass stuff, but you know, you're going to see it. You're not even going to see it, but maybe you'll see it from here or in a video or you know, still way back here. So yeah, looks great. So yeah, thank you, smoking joking. And um, what else? Yeah, I did get a lot done. Well, I got things done. So this front end's all ready to go now that this is cut. Kind of unnecessarily, but it is cut. That's ready to go. I got this intake I'm thinking about now too. I could screen it or foam it over because on the DA you don't have that blue deflector plate for the atmospheric pressure like you do the GP throws on these things. We'll see how it runs. I can uh, do that later. Then, yeah, I kind of finished the inside, got my um, battery mount locations all tidied away, the Smartfly Micro with the Futaba 7014 stabbed together, ready to go. Um, got my Tecaro IVEC all installed, ready to go, ret to go. Yeah, with DA, you get that red connector. And unless you have a red connector already coming off your IBEC or your receiver, whatever you're going to do, um, that thing's going to... There's going to be some soldering required no matter what you do. Or I guess you could press fit connect or something on. So I just soldered, a, I just took that red connector off and soldered on a JR connector, Futaba connector, standard RC connector. Put that together. I uh, did my usual mounts of work. The only thing I did different this time, I went kind of back to the old way on... I was using Viton for everything, and I went to the extra large um, Dubro. Uh, after talking to uh, Joe Lewis, and I always did anything 150cc and up, I would use the extra large to on the carb line. And I just stopped doing it just this year, just this... This, this year is the only time I've ever done that. Even seven years ago, I was still doing that. And, you know, DA has told me since 19, or not 19, 2001, when I got my first one from them, you know, that pump's really strong. Don't worry about anything. Put, uh, put the tank anywhere, do anything you want. Eight inch lines, plenty. And that's really held up to be true. But um, I always used to do extra large. And, and, uh, Joe was just telling me, you know, the way that everybody's flying now, so fast and aggressive and, you know, full throttle um, crankshafts and stuff and just chop the power after and all these kind of different things. He goes, man, you're really, you know, pushing the design 
of these little weed whacker motors <laughs> quite a bit. And he goes, you know, to have some fuel in there is better. He even likes the filter, filter clunk or the felt clunk. So that it's always, you know, absorbing. It always has some fuel in it and stuff like that. And, but I've always used a Dubro large clunk, uh, metal clunk, and man, nah, never had an ounce of trouble. And I haven't had a really announced trouble with any of this, but he just got me thinking. So I went back to Dubro extra large and I got Dubro large on the vent line. I was doing all this stuff with um, Viton since February, but now I just put Viton um, on the fill line in the, the carb line, sorry, in the tank itself with a boba straw. Um, Smoking Joking told me he had some Viton tear on him, so he's not sure Viton is always foolproof. I haven't had it do that yet, but there's just one more thing to worry about now. I've got another thing to worry about. Um, but yeah, so far I've, I've Vitoned everything all year, just 8th inch ID. Um, all my lines, all my planes, that's like 9 planes so far, I don't even know. And 11, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, it's been all good, it is all good, but... After talking to Joe Lewis and just knowing I did that old school mini a plane without any trouble, I went back to uh, Dubro Extra Large on the carb line. And what's nice too is you can see the fuel in there if it's sucking, but it, you know, it always does anyway. Um, and yeah, and that's Tygon instead of White Time. So yeah, got that all going. And yeah, with the throttle. So we ran that through, got my little grommet, protected the line where it went through the fiberglass. I don't do that that much. I kind of put um, Velcro, you know, where they might rub instead of putting those covers on, um, nylon covers. But I did in this one case, try to use the grommet, see if I move the grommet there, got another grommet here. Got the fuel line going through grommet. Yeah, you can see it right there. I always make it long. Slot, see if I can get that in focus. Maybe come in focus. Um, yeah, I always use a long slot for that. And can't quite get it to go in focus. Now that's becoming more an issue than the uh, film. Oh, there it goes. Um, yeah, I use a big O ring grommet. And um, it's not really an O ring, it's a grommet. And um, a long slot so that there's not much angle on the fuel line going through the bottom of the motor box. I've seen a lot of guys turn S's with those things and pretty sharp turns and you know it always works, it's fine and stuff. And, but um, I like to make it as straight a shot as possible from the tank to the carburetor. And that also, and then I like to put the, I've talked about this before, but I like to put that hole towards the front of the bottom <coughs> of the motor box. Um, that way on the other side, there's very little room uh, between it and the carb. So there's not much not much possibility of the fuel line bouncing over and hitting a muffler and having being baked a hole in it. Just trying to avoid problems if we can. Um, that's about it. So I just have just a tiny bit of work on the fuse. and But the big thing is I gotta do the wings and the elevators, which you know, that's the easy part. And on the Skywings, <coughs> excuse me, um, probably COVID. <laughs> um, the, on the Skywings, they have a ball link that has, you know, an extension, you want to, I want to call it, um, kind of built in conical, although it's not conical shape, but it just extends it's past the ball. So it's a spacer is what it is. Yeah. So it's a spacer extension on each side um, of their ball links on the brass tubing so then uh, you have much more pivot without any binding and then they correspondingly um, make their fiberglass control horn spaced further apart to accommodate that um, so I don't have to go through all that trouble like I do on the extreme flights like this plane where I got to cut new slots um, and widen that all out for the conicals because it's too tight. Um, and this is better. Like the Dubro setup with the conicals is better, and the wider 
spacing between the control horns is better. So, you know, Extreme Flight has what I want. They're just not spaced wide enough, but I spaced them. You can see the black line is the factory slot versus my slot. Um, but yeah, on this plane, I don't have to do anything that way. I just go right with the factory slots. I get plenty of swivel uh, because of the Chinese ball joint that comes with the Skylinks. So that should go together quickly. Uh, storms this weekend. Tropical thunderstorm? I bet you just sprinkles. This is Southern California. And, but if that all happens, I probably won't maiden until that's over, which we're saying like until Tuesday. But otherwise, I could maiden this thing in a day or two. So that's a lot to do about all that. But um, yeah, the main thing about this video was Joe McBride said step drill bit, cut off wheel, mark it, cut it, done in a minute. And he was right. Oh, yeah. And then Don Hamp told me. To, uh, because I, you know, the whole point of all this is I hate the fiberglass. That's why I didn't want to take the time in the first place. I hate itching. And um, so I use a particulate suit, so I'm good. But Don says, well, if you get any on you, and it's stuck in there and it's itching, use some duct tape and get it out. Uh, you know, yank the little fibers out of your pores. Sure enough, that's been working really good. And then, you know, this sport tape we use in rock climbing um, to protect our hands and other important parts. Um... It's even stickier than the duct tape, and yeah, it, it, this Don's uh, technique is right. Uh, this stuff will pull the fiberglass carbon fiber right out of your pores, and you will stop itching. So it's pretty cool. And then what I'm taking to do now is when I have to work in these fuses, that, that you know, there, there's so many cross members and everything that you're always rubbing your arm across them and getting some carbon fiber in your arm and itching. Is I've taken to actually um, make it yellow arms. I um, duct tape my arms because uh, long sleeves they get caught in everything it don't, don't seem to work long sleeve shirts um, but yeah I duct tape my arms and wrists up with this yellow duct tape and then I work on my yellow plane and then uh, it really works good um, so yeah thanks Don for that idea thanks smoking joking for this idea and uh, yeah these are three super nice planes right here and I have like Six in the the uh, rollover garage. <laughs> Just <laughs> everything go out here rolls over to there. Oh man, but I do have my eyeball on that muscle bite. I don't know if um I should get rid of that big laser. I don't know why I bought that big extra too. I should get rid of those and get a muscle bite. Then when I get that, am I gonna go? I wish I still had those other two planes and regret selling them can't sell anything anymore anyway um, I don't know that you ever could anybody still listening <laughs> that's about it I'm out bye